in many situations and teachings, it comes up that we need to look at the views, the ideas, the frameworks that we had from when we were young, that we've absorbed from society, that are not, in fact, the Buddhist worldview. And we bring this with us and we might mix it in, we might use these lenses to actually look at situations or even look at the Dharma, leading to preconceptions, misconceptions, and overall just not be using the Dharma as, in, as, a, as beneficial as possible. So for me, I know that I'm coming in with the scientific materialist worldview. I see that pop up all the time, especially where my resistance is around certain ideas in Buddhism. But one thing that puzzled me for a while was that I don't really think of the scientific materialist worldview as having an ethical framework. That it doesn't really have that. It's kind of, well, how does the world work, but not necessarily what are virtuous and non-virtuous actions. Like, that doesn't really have a place. And so I thought about this and thought, well, but I clearly follow rules. I think that I should act in certain ways and not others. Sorry. So if I'm doing this, I clearly have some sort of ethical framework. And this existed before I met the Dharma. So I started trying to look for it. Because my thought was, this ethical framework that I had before I met the Dharma is not the Dharma. And if I don't know what it is, I don't know what I'm bringing in and actually practicing, perhaps, thinking it's the Dharma, thinking it is the ethical framework that the Buddha taught. So I tried to watch my mind. When, when are there times that I think, oh, no, actually, instead of doing this, this would be better for me to do, to try to catch what that framework was. And you know, I didn't think it would be, you know, well, God is going to send me to hell. You know, that's one. Or, or you know, that, oh, I need to act in a certain way to, to get to heaven. Or not quite hedonism. Like, let me just do whatever is going to make me feel best. Like, I didn't think it was going to be either of those. And then one day, I think it was even the situation of leaving my kitchen shoes under my chair. I thought, what if everyone did this? Just that thought to myself of, if everyone left their kitchen shoes under their chair, what would this room look like? You know, when I maybe just leave my coat sitting on the chair, gosh, what, what would happen if everyone did this? And this happened a couple of times, and I thought, oh, this is my ethical framework. Basically, you know, should I act in this way based on whether I think it would be fine if everyone did this. So this was interesting, and I've noticed it come up a little bit, and I've started trying to look at it. And I don't recall anyone ever teaching this to me, and I'm not even sure I've lived by this my entire life. Um, but I did a little bit of looking online, because I thought this is probably one of like the Western ethical frameworks. And it's more or less de uh, deontology from uh, Immanuel Kant. and. I'm not going to claim to know much about it, and whatever I have going on in my mind is certainly not what he worked out. Um, but there's a fundamental aspect of rationality that I should just be able to think through what is appropriate or not, and universality. These rules should apply to everyone equally. And it's a little bit different than, say, the golden rule, do as to others as you would have them do unto you in that this rationality aspect is, is very important. And even Kant himself said that the model he was proposing is different than the golden rule. So I've been trying to look at this once I saw what it was. Is this helpful or is this not helpful? There are times that this framework can function to lead me to come to a decision about whether something's virtuous or non-virtuous that would agree with the Buddha Dharma. For instance, once upon a time, um, I was walking past a construction site, and I was a poor student at the time. I really needed some more bookshelves because I didn't have money and I didn't have bookshelves, but I had a lot of books. And so I took some bricks from this construction site. 
thinking, great, you know, I'll be able to make a bookshelf. They have a lot of bricks here. Um, you know, it's a rich college building this sidewalk or whatever it was, this will be fine. Well, that framework of, well, what if everyone took a couple of bricks from that construction site? Now there would not be any bricks left. You know, then it clearly becomes an issue. But when it was just me thinking, you know, what do I need to do satisfying my own self-centered wants? I want happiness now, and somehow that happiness comes from a bookshelf. Well, then I did it. But even this framework of universality kind of says, no, that, that really wasn't the right thing to do. But there's lots of situations where this doesn't lead me to what I think we would say is the right conclusion. For instance, the decision to uh, leave my career and move away from my family and tell my family that I'm not necessarily going to be able to support them and become a monastic. If the mentality was, well, would this work if everyone on earth did this? Well, it wouldn't. <laughs> and I've, I've even had someone say to, that to me once that, you know, you know, he, he kind of looked at the monastics and thought, but we can't all do this. You know, it's, it's a problem that they think everyone should do this. And I was like, well, I never heard them say that. But so in this case, then, if I think, well, okay, would, every, would it work if everyone did this? No. But that's not at all the situation. That's not clearly a valid way to evaluate it. So at that point, it's like, OK, if this isn't going to really lead me to the right conclusion in every situation, I want to work to replace this, this thing that I have in my mind assessing situations. And a helpful way to motivate myself to overcome it is to look at what the faults of this are. And in this case, again, I'm not trying to criticize Kant. I haven't studied um, exactly what he's written. I'm really just looking at this model in my own mind. And the first is that I see there's a lot of black and white thinking, that this leads me to black and white thinking. Does this one thing I am looking at, would it, would it be OK if everyone did it, regardless of situation, regardless of context? And so that black and white thinking is certainly not what we experience in the world. Everyone has different contexts. Everyone has different dispositions, different karma. You know, the Buddhist worldview says things are really, really complex. So I need to let go of this black and white thinking, which is clearly not accurate. The second big problem I see with this is that it presupposes that I can analyze something in a rational way. That in a way, there is some universal objectivity and that I have the ability to assess it. Well, I, I, I don't. But if I think I do, I am easily going to make self-centered decisions, thinking that I'm somehow tapping into some greater objectivity. So really, in a way, this becomes just a, a way I can justify my way. So maybe I say, OK, well, I'm not going to leave my kitchen shoes under my chair, because what would happen if everyone did that? But then this leads me into a judgmental mind. When I see that someone else has left their kitchen shoes under their chair, I think, don't they know what a mess it would make if everyone did this? Don't people know what a mess it makes when people leave all of their stuff on the windowsill? And going through this, it quickly becomes a judgment where I've decided, well, I am not going to do this because I think it's going to be an issue if everyone did it as soon as someone else does it, I think, well, they're violating this universal objective rule that I made up. So that, for me, is the big thing to see, that this kind of hidden, flawed ethical framework I've been living with is directly feeding my self-centered judgmental mind. So that really focuses on what the outside action is, not necessarily even the result of the action, but just, you know, in the most simple form, what does it look like from the outside? And the Buddhist worldview really encourages us to think about what the motivation of an action is, that the motivation is going to be the key thing that really determines is this virtuous or non-virtuous? Is this going to lead, you know, in a karmic sense to happiness or to suffering? So it's helpful to see how this is a place where my, my preconceptions, my ingrained habits are so contrary to the Buddhist worldview. And I can see how really looking at the motivation for actions is going to lead me to be less judgmental of others 
and be happier and more accepting of myself in these situations where, okay, maybe I'm leaving my kitchen shoes there because I'm in a hurry to do something else. And it's actually quite virtuous, that thing I want to do. The kitchen shoes are not a big deal in that moment, I, I think. So going forwards, I want to keep noticing this and really challenging it. I still obviously want to have integrity and consideration for others, but I want to, anytime this comes up, well, what if, what if everyone would do this? Remember to expand my view, to not use that black and white thinking, to remember all of the causes and conditions that come in, and to really turn my mind back to thinking about what is the motivation. So I hope over time I can replace this framework that I see that's not so helpful that's there, um, and maybe someday read some Kant, but at least in the meantime, focus on establishing um, that Buddhist framework of what is virtuous and non-virtuous. <laughs>